Good evening, everybody. I'm Beth Finnerty, president of the George West Mental Health Foundation and Skyland Trail. I want to thank each of you for joining us tonight for the inaugural Dorothy Chapman Fuqua Lecture at our flagship facility, the Skyland Trail Health and Education Center. Tonight is such a special evening for us as we introduce this annual lecture series with the purpose of engaging and educating the Atlanta community about issues in mental health. It blends so well with our own mission at Skyland Trail, which is hope and recovery for adults with mental illness, recovery of a meaningful life, recovery of healthy relationships, recovery of dignity and joy. We live out this mission each and every day in all that we do. In fact, I thought you may be able to see it tonight, but we actually have our mission on the wall over there. So you can look at that when the lights come up. Tonight, we are celebrating one woman who has helped us embody this mission, Mrs. Dorothy Fuqua. I have had the pleasure of being friends with Dottie for over the past two decades. And tonight, I could not be more proud to be standing here opening a lecture series in her honor. Dottie, I'm thrilled that you could be with us this evening to help us kick off this inaugural lecture series in your honor. We love you and we thank you for all you have done for us at Skyland Trail and for the incredible impact you have had on the mental health community in Atlanta. One of the things that, have ma that has made Skyland Trail so great is the support, involvement, and commitment we receive from our friends in the community. I am grateful to have had these friendships not only to strengthen the organization, but to provide me support and strength as well. Tom and Edwina Johnson, Rex and Duval Fuqua, you four have been such incredible friends to me, to Skyland Trail, and to the people we serve. Tonight, I thank you all for your friendship and for this wonderful gift you have given us, the Dorothy Chapman Fuqua Lecture Series. Your gift will endure for years to come in honor of a very special woman, and for that we are most grateful. And now I'm gonna turn the program over to one of these very good friends, Tom Johnson. I think it would be hard to find a person around here who doesn't know Tom, or of his distinguished reputation both in the business world and for his involvement in and support of charitable causes. I first met Tom in 2004 when he served as honorary chair of Benefits of Laughter. Most of you, of you, of you know him as the former publisher of the Los Angeles Times or as the former CEO of CNN. But what you may not know is his compassionate commitment to the cause and of his caring concern for those who struggle with mental illness every day. Tom volunteers his time to many nonprofits, both locally and nationally, and Skyland Trail is both honored and fortunate to be one of those. Please join me in welcoming Tom Johnson. What Beth is actually saying is that I cannot say no to Dottie Fuqua and no to Beth Fennerty. I just like to say good evening to the best uh, supporters and to the family and to the friends of Dottie, but certainly the best supporters of, uh, of Skyland Trail. It means a lot to this institution. It means so much to those who are served by this magnificent institution. Even though my name is Tom Johnson, I am best known in Atlanta and in other cities where we've lived as Edwina Johnson's husband. Uh, in this town, I'm also known as Dottie Fuqua's adopted son. And I can tell you that I am very proud of both roles. I am not, incidentally, as far as I know, in Dottie's will, but we can talk about <laughs> As you enter our home on Rileman Road, greeting you on the right side of our front porch is a tree named Dottie. On the left side, is a tree named J.B. Those two beautiful trees given to us by Dottie are daily reminders of two of the most wonderful people in our lives. In Edwina's garden also grows two maple trees from Dottie. One of those, incidentally, is known as Madam Queen. 
That was the nickname that J.B. gave uh, to Dottie, and he did so because she did, in fact, rule the Fuqua home. Those uh, trees, incidentally, were planted by uh, big cranes, giant hole diggers, landscaping equipment large enough to erect a skyscraper, and all I remember Ed Winter asking for was some little trees for Christmas, and they've been wonderful. But also inside our home are orchids. Orchids everywhere. Orchids of every imaginable size and shape and color. Dottie also inspired Ed Winter to love orchids and plants and flor floral design. I could have purchased Pike's Nursery for what Ed Winter has spent on orchids and other plants and trees for the past 20 years. And at times, I think that she is running a plant mortuary. <laughs> a few years ago, Dottie and Beth Finnerty, this is a true story, Dottie and Beth Finnerty trapped me. Um, Dottie said she wanted me to go for a ride. She stopped by, picked me up in her car, and drove me over here. I knew something was up, but I didn't know what. Well, she pulled into Skyland Trail, where we were met by Beth and by Nancy Stern, who, as many of you know, then worked as the development director of Skyland Trail. These three women and the work they do here absolutely captivated, captivated me then as it does now. One of the things I learned was how plant therapy helps those of us, like myself, who suffer from depression. I also learned just how special Skyland Trail is to her. And many of you have just seen that in the building next door, which has been nicknamed the Dottie. That along, incidentally, with other special projects like the Botanical Gardens, the Fuqua Orchid Center, projects such as Lady Bird Johnson's Wildflower Center in Austin, Texas. Ever since that first tour of this facility, Edwin and I have been huge champions, modest donors, and devoted friends of Beth, Dottie, and Skyland Trail. Tonight, Edwin and I are so proud to join with Rex and with Duval in the establishment of the Dorothy Chapman Fuqua Lecture Series at Skyland Trail. We hope that this lecture series will bring to Atlanta each year the very finest experts from around the world in the field of mental health. Our first speaker in the series will be introduced to you by uh, Dottie's actual son and my very close friend, Rex. Rex, I thank you for carrying forward the legacy so magnificently that your mother and your father left to all of us as one of their greatest gifts to future generations. Ladies and gentlemen, Rex Fuqua. Rex. I must say that when my mother adopted Tom, she didn't tell me in advance. It was uh, a little bit of a shock. I'm, I'm still dealing with it. Uh, luckily, Edwina came along as uh, part of the package, so I was thrilled about that. Uh, we have this kind of competition going. I got a rose. He didn't. I don't know what that means exactly, but... Uh, you know, my, my mother... Uh, was the emotional gardener in our house. She provided the emotional fertilizer that helped us grow. Uh, she certainly helped my father over their very, very long marriage through lots of ups and downs because as someone who suffered from depression, uh, he had lots of ups and downs. The, uh, the wonderful part of that story is that he was a great success. You can have your ups and downs, you can struggle, and you can still be a great success, but it takes the support of, of uh, family, friends, uh, caretakers, your doctors, and uh, the wonderful thing that we have today is uh, a great advancement in our understanding of mental illnesses. My father's first major depression hit him in, in the 1950s, 
And uh, if you watch One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, you know that it was not, uh, it was not one of the bright periods of time for the treatment of mental illness. So uh, it was uh, gratifying that over all these years, he got better as the treatments got better. So the fact that uh, mother struggled with this in the family uh, and that we had to deal with the stigma so that it was a quiet struggle uh, made her particularly sensitive to the, to the needs of the mentally ill and their families. And her commitment to Skyland Trail has been fantastic over the years. And uh, I think it's made a huge difference for the organization. I know it has. Thank you, Mother. I have the great uh, pleasure of uh, introducing a, a distinguished academic leader in the study and treatment of mental illness, Dr. Mark Rappaport, as our inaugural Dorothy Chapman Fuqua lecturer. Dr. Rappaport is the newly appointed chair of Emory's Department of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences. Before arriving at Emory, Dr. Rappaport served as the Poirier Family Chair in Schizophrenia and Related uh, Disorders in the Department of Psychiatry at Cedars-Sinai in Los Angeles, and Vice Chair and Professor in the Department of Psychiatry at UCLA. Dr. Rappaport is a board-certified psychiatrist. He has acted as a mentor to numerous students, physicians, and researchers in the field of psychopharmacology. His research focuses on the biological genesis of anxiety disorders, bipolar disorder, depression, and immunity abnormalities in schizophrenia. He has served as the first chair of the National Institute on Drug Abuse Clinical Trials Network Data Safety Monitoring Board and chair of its special review committee. Additionally, he has served as National Institute's of Health and National Institute of Mental Health Review Committees. Dr. Rappaport is a graduate of the University of California at San Diego, where he received his medical degree. And following his residency at University of California at San Diego, he completed a research fellowship uh, at the uh, USSD's Department of Psychiatry and then a clinical fellowship at the National Institute of Mental Health in Bethesda, Maryland where he later served as a guest researcher. I could go on and on because his CV is about that long. Uh, but needless to say, he's a nationally recognized clinician, researcher, educator, and scholar. Having gotten to know him over the past few months, I can only say that we are very, very fortunate to have him here in Atlanta. We may, may not be able to provide him with the California weather that he's become accustomed to over all these years, but we will make up for it with our Southern hospitality and support. I am thrilled and honored that he is our speaker tonight. Please give Dr. Rappaport a warm welcome. Well, Rex, thank you very much for a wonderful introduction. And thank you also for your friendship and support that you've already given to myself and to my family. I really do appreciate it. Same with you, Tom. You guys are some of the reasons that I'm here. What we're going to do tonight is, is talk a little bit about getting off the couch. We're going to talk about why Atlanta can transform psychiatry in the 21st century. Now, you notice I'm not saying Emory. I'm not even saying Skyland Trials. I'm saying Atlanta. And the focus tonight is on you and what all of us can do together. But in order to do that, we need to start out and look at what the problem really is. You know, I understand that I'm, I'm sort of bringing coal to Newcastle, that you guys understand this. But we need to get out the word. If you look at the, at the global challenge, five out of the top 10 causes of disability in the entire world are brain diseases. We're talking about depressive disorder. We're talking about alcoholism. We're talking about suicide. 
bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia. Five out of the top 10 diseases that cause disability in this world are ones that we have the capacity to help and to treat. If we look at children, the prevalence of anxiety disorders is, is 13%. Disruptive behavior disorders is over 10%. So if you total it all up, over 25% of kids, closer to 30% of children may suffer from some type of serious brain disease, things that we can take care of. In adults, the worldwide prevalence rate is, is essentially 30%. So look at this room. Look around here. Look around here at the people at this room. Think about one out of three people in this room having a, a brain disease. These diseases, common diseases of the most complex organ system in the, of the body are, are the challenge that we face. You know, I just got to Atlanta, but I heard there was a little trouble in term, terminus recently. <laughs> of course, all of you know what terminus means, right? Atlanta. Um, and there were some challenges that had recently been faced in the state in terms of issues around uh, providing the best care possible um, in Georgia. There have been some challenges when it came to treating kids in Georgia. I'm going to tell you why these challenges are really opportunities for us and why all of us working together can do some wonderful things here why we'll make a difference, and why Atlanta allows us a unique opportunity to make that difference. We can create unique synergies here. There are wonderful facilities, as you have here at Skyland Trail. There are not a lot of cities that can boast a facility that this wonderful. And Beth, for you to take this from a staff of four to what you see today is, is absolutely remarkable. And you know, you should really be applauded for that. There is superb leadership now in the State Department of Mental Health with Frank Shelf and Emil Risby. Of course, Frank would not be nearly as good if it hadn't been for Bill McDonald, who's been his partner in crime for many, many years. We have committed advocates at the state level here. You know, within the first, before I actually started in Emory, with, before we had actually unpacked our boxes, Pat Gardner invited me over for dinner. And she said, we've got some problems here, Mark, we've got to fix. And Pat and Jerry were there, and, and Mary Margaret was there, of course, as, as well, saying, OK, now, how are we going to fix these issues about mental health in this state? We, it's remarkable to have people involved in the state government that accessible and that ready to be part of our team. And then Grady Hospital is a tremendously underutilized resource. And I think we have a tremendous opportunity there to bring so much to people who need our help. We have a best-in-class children's hospital network. It truly is one of the best in the world. We have a generous community. And you, you all are very, very generous and, and, and thoughtful individuals. And um, that's really remarkable. It's remarkable to have a, com a community that understands the importance of the brain, understands the importance of, of these diseases, and is willing to be generous. And not just with money, but even more importantly, with time and with your reputations of saying, hey, this is important stuff. We have remarkable partners in, the, in, this, in this area with Georgia Tech and Morehouse and Agnes Scott and Georgia State and at Emory, and one of the reasons why I came here is we truly have a, a world-class academic university and health system, and the foundations were laid by Charlie Nemiroff and the previous chairs of, of truly one of the great departments of psychiatry in the world. Now, let's talk a little bit more about this, this department for a second. We have tremendous clinical material spectacular faculty and staff. And, and a department is not just the chairman or the faculty. It's our trainees. 
our nurses, it's those people that are, are you know, doing security for us. All of us working together are what makes the department. And we have tremendous people, administrative assistants, everyone at, at, in our department is truly devoted to patients first, taking care of people. Outstanding training programs. We have one of the few academically embedded psychoanalytic institutes in the country. This is a unique resource. We've been fortunate to have a leader like Steve Levy who has been really helpful in ensuring that the, the institute remain appropriately integrated into uh, the department, but also that the institute not become ossified, that it be rigorous and scientific and engaged with the biology of, of, of the brain. We have long-standing partnerships in the community. The Yerkes National Primate Center is a, a tremendous resource that we have here at Emory. And we should be very proud of Stuart Zola and the wonderful, remarkable growth of Yerkes under his leadership. And the unique breadth and depth of research. So what I want to do is just highlight that a little bit for people. Um, because research leads to hope. Research, you know, many years ago, my, my father is a physician, and, and, and my father spent many years in the laboratory as well as taking care of patients, and he was once asked, well, why do you spend all this time in the lab? You know, why do you spend all this time away from your family and everything else? And what he said was, you know, when I'm out there on the wards and I'm seeing patients and I don't know how to cure them or how going into the lab and doing research gives me hope. It gives me hope I'm going to find that cure for that patient of mine. I think you'll see with the, the little bit of we're going to talk about tonight, the tremendous hope we have because of the research at Emory. Emory is a leader of what we call translational research. What's translational research? It's real simple. It's, bringing leading edge research to people. It's having the capacity to go from the bench to the bedside and then from the bedside out in the community so you disseminate those findings and bring the findings to the people that need it most. We're gonna talk, we're gonna scratch the surface tonight because when I was talking to Rex and Tom about this dinner, they said, you know, Mark, they're gonna get real antsy in your seats if, uh, you talk too long. <laughs> so I said, okay, we're only gonna talk about three things tonight, but you need to realize that this is the tip of the iceberg of research about the brain at Emory University and, and just a sliver of what we do in our department. We're gonna talk about mood disorders in their treatment, stress trauma in its treatment, and a little bit about substance abuse because you know, as we were, as I was listening to you talk, Tom, you know, you were saying, you got to get out the secret. The, the fact that brain diseases are things that people have all the time, and that it's not, it shouldn't be a, a stigmatized issue to have a disease of the most complex organ system of the body. Well, what I want to do tonight is just highlight a little bit of the secret of Emory, because I suspect that even though many of you are, are natives of terminus, that you don't have a, a, an inkling of just how wonderful this department is and just how fortunate I feel at least to be part of this department now. But let me show you some of that. We're gonna talk about mood disorders and in mood disorders we have it all. We treat from children to late life. We have from early discovery to treatment dissemination. And I want to take a minute to show you the people and a little bit about what we're doing. So this is Ed Craighead's group, and Ed is back in the back of the room. You know, we know about those people in the back of the room, Ed, don't we? <laughs> and this is part of his group in the camp program. What's their mission? To offer the most effective evidence-based medical assessments and interventions when needed for depressed, bipolar, and anxious children and adults. To provide the most effective evidence-based psychosocial assessment and interventions, again, for these children. 